Hey guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of Linux Mint distributions. We're going to be taking a look at Linux Mint Debian Edition because they've brought out some new um, images for it. And we're going to be taking a look at Linux Mint KDE. And the reason we're going to be taking a look at Linux Mint KDE is simply because there really hasn't been that much change in Linux Mint Debian Edition. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Linux Mint Debian Edition. I'm going to tell you sort of more about what it's like as a distribution. Um, and then I'm going to, of course, move on to Linux Mint KDE. Uh, just for for a bit of comprehen uh, comprehensiveness because we've looked at basically every other version of Linux Mint so we might as well collect the set. So anyway, this is um, Linux Mint. I've chosen the Cinnamon um, version of Linux Mint uh, DE. Uh, I assume that the Mate works just as well as it does on, um, on, on the standard version of Linux Mint. So Linux Mint Debian Edition is a version based on rolling version of Debian the rolling branch of Debian, rather. And it is designed to be a little bit faster. Um, so that, you know, it's designed to be rolling. Um, and it doesn't have as much support. And they say that it's it's lacking a few features. So the, the post is available on the, on the Linux Mint blog. It's worth checking out, uh, worth adding to the RSS reader if you're into following Linux distributions. Um, but it basically is, it's, it seems, they seem to word it like it's like an experimental branch, but it seems to be doing really quite well. Um, I've known a few people that actually get along quite well with it, um, and it's nice not to have to, to reinstall. Although that being said, with Linux Mint, you know, if you install at the beginning of a, um, a release cycle, you've got more than two years in order before you have to do a full system upgrade anyway. So... Uh, it's, uh, you know, on one side you've got Linux Mint, which is a very scheduled, you know, once every two years kind of release. And then this is like a, a bit more of a, you know, well, this is this is the rolling branch of it, as it were, uh, based on Debian testing. So the software does seem to be a little bit more up to date, but not like if you're looking for bleeding edge software, it's still really worth going with something like either Manjaro or Antergos or even just Arch if you're willing to uh, go through the installation process. Uh, I had a look here at the welcome screen. This is the pretty standard welcome screen we see across all Linux Mint distributions, but I was I heavily praise uh, Ubuntu Mate's really good welcome screen. So it's probably uh, a good idea for me to, to see how it measures up. And of course, Linux Mint being the kind of distribution that appeals to newcomers, um, it, it, you know, th these things are important. So it's got release notes, new features. What does new features do? So it does pull up, um, hmm. That's, yeah, I guess that's kind of useful, but they could have done it in a bit more of an elegant way than just pulling open a window in a browser. Uh, so for example, yeah, and if you did like clicked on apps and then you just type in the password and then it should come up very, it should come up with the software center just as an application, I think, but it's taking a little bit of a time to load. It might be because it's the, no, it's not the first time loading. So there you go. Now, uh, again, Linux Mint has a pretty good software center. A lot of people say that it looks a little dated, a little basic, but it, 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 it does exactly what it needs to do. Um, you know, if I want an application for the internet or I want to look at all packages, I want to search. You know, there isn't much to this window, but then, you know, a, a, any additional stuff would just really be clutter at this stage. So, you know, you've got your categories and that's really all you need. And then, yeah, one thing I do like about the Linux Mint Software Center, it does, it does allow software reviews and comments as well, which is a big plus, a big plus. So, yeah, Linux Mint Software Manager, it does get a bit of flack for looking a little dated, but it, it has... You know, it's it's one of the best ones, really. One of the best ones, as is, of course, the update uh, manager as well. So the update manager on first run, I've updated it, as you can see here, and I don't know if I can up yet yeah, update policy. It asks you this question. Um, you can select one of three uh, upgrade policies. Um, most people who are sort of into Linux will probably want always update everything. The, the distinction is the kernel updates. So they, it doesn't it doesn't update the kernel on um, these two options at the top by default. Now, if you select the middle one, you can select a kernel upgrade as and when you want to, uh, whereas the bottom one here is it will assume that you want to up upgrade everything and then just roll back stuff that, that might not work. But then again, Linux Mint does put stability probably as a top priority for its distribution. So you're generally going to be safe. Um, in fact, this is the first Linux distribution for a long time I've run in a virtual machine. Now, it's all when I, when I run distributions in a virtual machine, just a bit of a side note here, it is always important to bear in mind that I will run into less bugs. I'll run into fewer bugs than, um, than you guys running it on, on any bare metal installation because in a lot of cases, Lin, um, Linux distributions are tested in virtual machines because it's just a really easy way to test um, 
Linux distributions. And if you know, if I'm thinking of switching my main desktop environment, or not even my main desktop environment, my my daily driver Linux distribution, you know, you, you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm going to the first step that I'm going to do after reading about it on the website is going to be trying it out in a virtual machine, and then you start the process down there. And that's even the most rudimentary forms of testing, not even software testing or bug fixing or anything like that. So a lot of software you may often find at times is designed to run in virtual machines more than it's designed to run in bare metal simply because it's easier to develop software that way sometimes. But so that's you know that's worth bearing in mind that if you if you ever wonder why I, that there is a mysterious lack of of bugs in these reviews it's not because I uh, strategically edit them out to to make Linux look better it is just simply because virtual machines are easier to 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 bug fix for simple as really but the one bug that I did have with this one and it's a somewhat something of a minor one it was in the installation process now I'm running through a VPN um, and my VPN comes out at a German speaking country so um, and my German is not great especially when it comes to things like technical stuff so um, I switch you know during the installation process where it asks you I switched over to English and I switched to English keyboard all that kind of stuff um, and that worked perfectly except for one screen in the partition manager and I managed to work my way through it obviously because I've got the installation done here um, but it was one it reverted back to German for like three buttons on the partition manager for some reason and um, and it kind of threw me uh, but since I already knew what I was since since I've set up more than a few Linux distributions in virtual machines by this time uh, I, I managed to navigate it just through memory but I can imagine others having a having an issue with it what does chat room do so ch oh chat room just th sort of throws you straight into the Linux mint one um, which is quite interesting, and that's uh, yeah, that takes you out. Uh, it gives you donations. That's always good. I I do feel that I know like a lot of Linux distributions get a bit squeamish about asking for money. You, you know, you've built an operating system. You're well within your rights. You know, like it doesn't need to be a hidden hidden thing down there. I'm perfectly fine with the you know elementary um, sort of asking you for a donation before downloading. I, I'm I'm happy for Ubuntu. I like I think Ubuntu Mate do it. Uh, quite well where they put the you know uh, donations just beneath the download button um, and you know that because the thing is it's like with this with, with donations it's a, it's a matter of finding the right prompt it's a matter of like asking for donations in a point where people are likely to give them but also not likely to be um, you know they're, they're not likely not likely to feel sort of um, like it's an, an ad or um, or like their their software is uh, is adware or anything like that so but yeah like a nice uh, donations button that's good there Documentation. Mm, a PDF. I have not actually read through the official user guide. I should probably do that. It's 52 pages. Can't do it in this video, but that might be a, you know. The documentation seems to cover the basic stuff, which, although it's pretty good, um, and a PDF version is quite good for printing. Um, it would have been, it would, you know, you know, the 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 big improvement I could see for this welcome screen is just simply embedding these items within the application itself. Um, it just makes it look a little bit more polished and a little bit more. But the, as long as the information is available, you know, like that's that's certainly the important stuff done. So it is a good welcome screen. Um, it's just not. Um, it's it's just it's you know, and that's. I mean, to be fair, that's what a welcome screen really needs to be. It's just a li you know some some good and useful links on first run. That's really it. Um, and I've always liked the cinnamon settings as well that's uh, I've, I've covered it in previous review um, reviews so I'm not going to talk about it now but it's always been straightforward I've always liked cinnamon I've just felt like it's it has a lot of competition that's also really good like for example the difference between Linux Linux Mint uh, cinnamon and Linux Mint Mate you know like there isn't enough of a difference between the two to warrant two different images my guess has always been that cinnamon has been Linux Mint's flagship desktop environment and there will come a time when it will be the, the main you know, the only uh, official Linux Mint image available in Mate will be sort of maybe pushed into community, possibly. That's always how I've imagined it, it, it ending up. Um, because a, a Linux distribution with two desktop environments without one being like a main one, I've, I've always felt to be, not, you know, mixed messaging, I guess. Same thing with with Manjaro. I would, I would rather they just focused on the XFCE version. Um, and yeah, like the software choices are pretty much all the same. You've got the X apps, Firefox browser, HexChat, HexChat's great, LibreOffice, sound and video. Is this the, I mean, this is basically Totem, but is it? No, or is it M player? Or is it just a square? So I've managed to restart X and then I started up the, the media player again. Um, 
as you can see, if I select the menus, the menus actually draw behind that um, that black screen area there, which um, is a bit of a problem because it doesn't mean it means that I ne can't necessarily see what version the application is or even what the application is called. So um, that's uh, I believe it's one of the the new X apps that uh, that Linux Mint are rolling out. Um, yeah, a lot of people sort of critique them as being just more additions to an already full, you know, like we've already got software that that can do all those jobs. You know, Totem is fine. Um, you know, there, there are plenty of text editors, for example, and calculators and all this kind of stuff. So a lot of people see this as just sort of adding more software into an already complete um, ecosystem where we could be focusing on 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 breaking new fun, fun frontiers and actually, um, you know, fixing up software that... Um, that is is lacking in Linux, perhaps, but uh, I'm going to leave that for another day. Um, other than that, this seems like a pretty standard Linux Mint Cinnamon release, but with um, the caveat that yeah, it's it's not quite as stable. Um, yeah, you don't get PPAs. Yeah, you are missing a few features, but um, you don't have to do a full full new compave install every two years. Um, yeah, but like I say, there's not actually that much to say about it. I'm surprised the video has even lasted uh, this long. Okay, so here we are with Linux Mint KDE. Uh, this is a little bit of the uh, odd one out because uh, it doesn't have the same theming as the other Linux Mint distributions, uh, which I believe is um, Greybird or Greenbird. Um, Callbird, I think, is what it originally derives from, and then there are a few themes that sort of split off with it with, with differing names um, that all have a similar sort of aesthetic theme. So this is Linux Mint KDE. Um, it, it 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 doesn't match entirely the aesthetic, uh, not even necessarily the color scheme. Um, and it comes with more KDE focused apps, uh, with the exception of uh, the Office. The Office uses yeah, uh, uses LibreOffice, um, which is interesting because if I I would always opt for Clag is it Clagra? Uh, for the QT version of, uh, or the QT, the big QT Office uh, suite, which I've I've tried on and off, and and really quite like it, but um, but I'm not a big uh, Office suite user, so I haven't really tested it to um, to any degree. This comes with VLC as the standard media player. This makes a lot more sense on QT uh, applications because the um, the media player is this is a, you know VLC is a QT application. But I gotta say, this definitely does seem like like the uh, like the odd one out in terms of of um, Linux Mint community distributions, where the the aesthetics seem to be closer to um, the, the you know like an original vanilla uh, Plasma install than they are to Linux Mint. They they include the Linux Mint apps and they include um, some of the software selection. Um, the installation process uses a different installer, just as easy to use. If you are into KDE, like if KDE is your preference and you do like the Linux Mint philosophy, then you're going to get on well with this distribution. But again, um, it, you know, Linux Mint is not the most interesting of distributions to talk about. They make very reserved software choices, and, and rightly so. And they know who that they're, they're aiming their distributions towards, and um, and they seem to be doing quite well. They've done, a, I think, they've done a few missteps over the years, and I think that they are at risk of other user-friendly distributions eating their lunch at this point. I think that both Solus, uh, I think Ubuntu Mate, um, I think Antergos, uh, that these are all these are all things you know threats that Linux Mint have to compete with, uh, and and I've, that's a very short list. You know, um, even Ubuntu are doing you know like vanilla Ubuntu. Um, are doing quite well these days as well so okay so that's about it for this video today just a bit of a quick summary Linux Mint Debian Edition mm, it's probably a little bit more rough around the edges than your standard Linux Mint um, but if you're looking for something that is based on Debian testing and brings along with it the Linux Mint philosophy you'll probably be quite happy to work around those issues anyway um, and uh, for that, it's a pretty decent distribution for what it is. Uh, my only issue with it is that I just have this feeling in the back of my head that it will uh, have support withdrawn from it in favor of consolidating support for the flagship distributions of Linux Mint. But I would be perfectly happy if Linux Mint put all of their resources behind Linux Mint Debian Edition um, just as much. I think they could get a really good distribution if they, if they decide to do that. But of course, that is their choice, and, um, and, and Linux Mint is a, is a, is a fine distribution 
um, because of the choices that they've made. Linux Mint KDE. I've got to say, if I'm completely honest, this does seem like the weak link of the Linux Mint family. It doesn't have the sort of the aesthetics um, that um, that Linux Mint brings to it. But that being said, if you are a KDE, you know, if you're a fan of KDE, you're a fan of the Plasma Desktop, and you are a fan of Linux Mint, these two being meshed together is is fine. It, it you know, it's exactly what you expect. It's exactly what you want. Um, so it's fine, you know, if you want Linux Mint plus KDE, this is pretty much what you get. You do not get necessarily get the, the Linux Mint aesthetics, but it's not like KDE is, um, you know, it, it's not like it's lacking in themes. There are probably plenty of themes available. And um, also, it does come with a nice selection of uh, desktop backgrounds out of the box. I know it's a small, superficial um, issue. But it is one that I like, you know. It's 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 what it, it to me. It just demonstrates that the the details have been um, have have been taken care of, or at least um, acknowledged. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, of course. And I'm going to stick up some interesting links on the end screen for your viewing pleasure. That's about it from me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.